So in the previous video, we saw a diode bridge modulator, and it was a little bit simple, right? This acted like our pulse that goes off and on from one to zero. <clears throat> but what if you had a switch that went from one to minus one? Well, this would result in the same thing. So this is actually also going to give you a uh, series of uh, Fourier series where each term is at some cosine and omega C. And so that means that you'll have at least one term that is exactly at your carrier of interest. So in a more complex uh, situation, right, we can make this uh, ring modulator. So the ring modulator, it's a bit more complex. The ring modulator, instead of going from one to zero, goes from one to minus one. And if you take this message like this, turn it off and on, right, this is going to look like this. And instead of just going off and on, it's going to go uh, from positive one to negative one, it's going to give you the same result where you have uh, introduced a cosine wave at your carrier frequency. You pass it through that bandpass filter. Your final result is going to be your message multiplied by some carrier frequency. This coefficient k simply means that if you pass it through here, right, you may change the amplitude a bit, right? You have a bunch of circuit parts, uh, so you might change the amplitude a bit, but the end result is a modulated message with some constant coefficient. An alternative circuit that's drawn like this, this gives you a bit of a more clear picture, right, why this is called the ring modulator. Uh, they, the book draws it in a slightly different way so that they don't have so many of these uh, arcs going over each other. But in this case as well, just like in the diode bridge modulator, uh, these diodes are controlled by a cosine omega CT, right, and this is where our carrier frequency is introduced by turning these diodes into reverse and forward bias. Uh, when they are, uh, when cosine omega CT is in the positive direction, you'll have diode two and diode four modeled as open circuits and one and two modeled as constant voltage drops. In the negative, you would have diode one and two, or diode one and three open while diode two and four become constant voltage drops. And so this basically allows different positive and negative parts to pass through the, this um, uh, circuit. And the end result is a, uh, a switch omega, uh, W naught. And W naught, as so long as your diodes are controlled by a uh, open and closed sinusoidal frequency, omega C, you're going to get terms, right, like this, where you have first omega C, then uh, three omega C, so multiples of this omega C. If you filter it out, so this at this point right here, right, this is where you have the Fourier series, WT, W naught T. If you pass it through a filter centered at your carrier frequency, you can get rid of these ones, right? So these are the undesired ones that you can get rid of. Now, <clears throat> um, this works similar to the diode bridge modulator, but instead of turning uh, from one to zero, it goes from one to minus one. Now, what we should notice here is that uh, we do not have any terms that are the message only or some uh, coefficient times the message. And we al also don't have any terms that are the cosine wave uh, by itself or some cosine wave multiple only which means that both the message and the cosine wave have been removed here at the end. And we will call this a double balanced modulator. So this ring modulator is a double balanced modulator.